This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight Now, we bring you an exclusive interview with Dr. Bibek Debroy, Chairman of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister of India. Interviewer is Shubhomoy Bhattacharji, Senior Journalist. Bibek Debroy is a name that's so very well known to us that it's actually not even necessary for any listener to know who he is. Other than being the chairman of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister, however, Bibik Debroy has a very interesting series of work as a polymath where he has translated both the Mahabharata and Valmiki's Ramayana into English. And it has been something that a lots of book readers have found as their entry points into our classics. But today, we have had a chance to get Vivek Debroy here to talk in his hat as the Chairman of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister as well as one of India's most distinguished economists to say what does he make of the current debates on poverty in India which has been referred to by IMF, the World Bank and so many others and you've been tracking that debate so extensively. So what and where and how should a radio listener understand this debate? When one is debating poverty, one must first realize that I need two different things. First, I need the definition of a poverty line. That definition of a poverty line may be based on what I need for basic subsistence and then it is converted into a monthly per capita consumption expenditure which will vary depending on whether it is rural or urban. So I need that poverty line. The last official poverty line is what is known as the Tendulkar poverty line, the Suresh Tendulkar poverty line for which we have these monthly per capita consumption figures in 2011-12. And secondly, we need the data. In a country like India, the only way you can get data for this is through household surveys. And historically, these household surveys have been done by the NSS. Unfortunately, the last NSS consumption expenditure survey is for 2011-12. So in one sense, the only firm poverty figures we really have are for 2011-12 using the Tendulkar poverty line. There are other things that other people have done which are to argue that what I have just described is what is called a headcount ratio and poverty is multidimensional, so we should have multidimensional measures, but that's a different thing. A lot of people have jumped into the poverty debate in the complete absence of data because the next consumption survey has just been started. It will probably be completed in the middle of 23. After that, the processing takes time, so we will have firm poverty data, poverty ratios towards the end of 23. Various people have made various assumptions, partly in the midst of COVID because of the exogenous shock that COVID brought, the additional increases in medical costs. All of these involve assumptions. In the absence of the NSS consumption expenditure survey, we used what is probably the most robust survey we now have, which is called the PLFS, the Periodic Labor Force Survey. Stated very simply, because prices have increased, using the Tendulkar poverty line, which was based on 2011-12 prices, one has to make reasonable assumptions about inflation. We use the consumer price index and jack up what the poverty line would be today. And then you can compute using PLFS What is the poverty level in India today? Generally, the trend is from 2011 to 12 to this PLFS, which is 2020-21, poverty has declined. I do not think anyone can debate this. What one can argue is that the decline should have been faster. Everything that we have discussed so far almost tends to suggest that it is an all-India issue. It is not an all-India issue. Different states show different trends. So the focus of reducing poverty should be and has always been on what states do. And considering that it's a 10-year development, it's a very significant, therefore, what we call a secular development, that the poverty, therefore, through a series of partially because of the government's intervention and others, has definitely, therefore, started. 
showing a declining trend. And this is in conformity with government policies because since May 2014, this government has provided all kinds of things which economic survey called basic necessities. Now, if that's happening, obviously the percentage of population below the poverty line is likely to decline, should decline. I should also quickly add that there are several other people who have made all kinds of estimations. All of those generally tend to show this secular decline in poverty. What varies is the degree. At the beginning of this debate, you talked about a very interesting dimension of poverty, which is talked about the multidimensional issue of poverty. Would you want to sort of educate our listeners and what is it exactly that you are referring to? When the poverty ratios first evolved in the late 1950s, there's a lot of debate about this. When I'm looking for a number, I want a number that is simple. It is simple to understand. It is simple for policymakers to appreciate. And the poverty ratio is that. No one denies that poverty has many other dimensions also. I can try to capture poverty through access to health. I can try to capture poverty through access to education. But sometimes this tends to clutter matters and make it a bit more complicated than is necessary. And most of these things are correlated actually with that basic poverty measure. Human Development Index is also another such simple measure because in addition to the traditional poverty ratio, it has health and education. The multidimensional poverty measure emanated from Oxford. It is not good enough to simply have a measure. I need to get data. I mentioned the problems with the consumption survey, but it is easier to get data on something like consumption as compared to health and education. Very significant point is out here. And in this context, one of the issues that comes out is the different levels of income, the differences, issues about equity, inequity, which you also you have commented on in several pieces of yours. Would you like to throw light on those? Where are the common misconceptions that often occur? I think the first obvious point is that these two notions are linked, poverty and inequality. However, they are intrinsically different because poverty is an absolute measure. It is a function of what my living standard is, whether it is above the poverty line, whether it is below the poverty line. It has nothing to do with what someone else's standard of living is. Whereas definitionally, inequality is a relative measure. It's a function of what is happening to the other person. There are two different notions and I prefer to look at them differently. One is inequity and the other is inequality. When I use the word inequity, I mean that everyone must have equitable access to physical infrastructure, social infrastructure, financial inclusion, markets, technology, education, everything. It's a bit like saying every student must have the same chance of getting admission into an educational institution. So this government's attempt since May 2014 has been to address this issue of inclusion to make the system more equitable. Inequality is more like a product. It is like saying after all students have had equal chance to enter an educational institution, they must pass out with the same marks. When one is talking about inequality, it is a function of what indicator I am going to use. There are things economists call wealth, which is stock, and there are things that are income. Most of the time, when people are talking about inequality, they mean wealth. I am extremely skeptical of wealth being used as an indicator, partly because that wealth may be a function of stock market valuations, it may be a function of real estate valuations. I would much rather talk about income. Income data in India we cannot get, they are unreliable, so we have data on consumption expenditure. There is a separate issue, which is an issue of spatial or geographical inequality. And that is extremely important because in a period of rapid growth, often the spatial inequality tends to go up. So far as the distribution of consumption expenditure is concerned, and I repeat, this is consumption expenditure, not income because we don't have income data. Using that same PLFS, there has actually been a decline in inequality in India. For the distribution of consumption expenditure, and there is no contradiction between saying this and saying that spatial inequality has gone up. So when we are talking about inequality, I think it is very important to be very clear in one's mind, what is it that we mean? You referred very significantly to the fact that some of the states may be are differently placed in terms of poverty issues as well as on the other indicators. 
when you look at these things, when you look at what is being done on a policy level, you also look at what are the reasons. So how do you overall see the lay of the land happening? Which way is it going? And what are the possible challenges and solutions? Actually, that is a long list of reforms. There is a list of reforms that centers around agriculture, creating employment opportunities in the rural sector that are outside agriculture. This is one set of issues. Another way of looking at it is if, whether I'm talking about reducing poverty or increasing employment, I need what economists call markets to be efficient. And the two most obvious markets that need to be made efficient are land markets and labor markets. Neither of these is particularly efficient. Land is completely in the state.